jury that he picked ended up being mostly uh, I have to. I have businessmen or their clerks, and one of the jurors actually ended up being a relative of one of the dead policemen. Um, the bailiff publicly claimed, I am managing this case and I know what I'm about. These fellows are going to be hanged as certain as death. They were like Krispy Kreme. Mayor Harrison testified. <laughs> Mayor Harrison testified that the speeches were tame and no proof offered that they were inciting any violence. Uh, the rest of the case was pretty much, it was just, like, it was a jury. And, yeah, I mean, they didn't have anything. All they, all they could say is that they were anarchists and that they were union members. And that is what they were on trial for, for being anarchists and for being members of the union. And for fighting for an eight-hour workday. Uh, that is all that they were on trial for because they had no evidence of them having a bomb, having thrown a bomb, having access to any kind of bomb, and their speeches were not inciting violence in any way, shape, or form. Did they try to use some of those confessions that they coerced? Um, from what I read, I didn't see anything about them being used, and I don't think they need to use them just because of the pack jury. And the fact that it was all you know, employees Bye. and their clerks, so it really didn't matter. Um, yeah, long story short, they were all found guilty yeah. for accessory to murder. They were all sentenced to death. They went through their appeals, and the Supreme Court at the time said it had no jurisdiction. Uh, about a year later, after the trial, four of the members or actually five of the members came up to their uh, descendants state being hung. Four of them were actually hung. Albert Parsons, August Spies, Adolf Eicher, and George Engel. Oh, Louis yeah. Lee, 21, he beat the hangman's noose by taking his own life in his jail cell by biting a vial of dynamite in his mouth and blowing up his head. He was in a little glass vial. They didn't have the same rules as they do now, or you know, any kind of detectors or anything like that. You could get anything into a jail cell back then. They pet people that like things to eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably baked in a cake. Yeah. <laughs> it was in his bra. Yeah. 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 was just saying the same thing. So. Hey, uh, the cops ever brought up on like brutality charges that the village didn't exist back then? No, they didn't exist. It was pretty much. There you go. You're done. Thank you. Have a good time. Um, <laughs> And with their hanging, that is actually the workers' holiday, the workers' the International Workers' Day, May Day, the Haymarket Massacre. Their hanging is what we celebrate in a sense, because with that, it actually ignited more of a fear across the country to fight for the eight-hour workday. There were calls from international, you know, all over Europe to uh, free them. And to let them go. Excuse me, I've got no tears. So, let's see. Uh, 60,000 signed petitions to the new governor of Illinois, John Peter Atfield, who investigated the facts, denounced what had happened, and pardoned three remaining prisoners. Um, in 1889, the first Congress of the Second International, meeting in Paris for the centennial of the French Revolution and the exposition of Universae, following a proposal by Ray Raymond Levine, called for international demonstrations on the 1890 anniversary of the Chicago protests. In, uh, May Day was formally recognized as an annual event at the International Second Congress in 1891. In 1904, the International Socialist Conference meeting in Amsterdam called on all social democratic party organizations and trade unions of all countries to demonstrate energetically on May 1st for the legal establishment of the eight-hour day, for the class demands of the, pro of the proletariat and for universal peace. The Congress made it mandatory upon the proletarian organizations of all countries to stop work on May 1, wherever it is possible, without injury to the workers. Eventually, the eight-hour workday was, was had. Child labor was outlawed. Uh, working conditions eventually began becoming better to what we have now. But without this happening, it would at least never progressed. Who knows? Maybe it would have, but it would have taken a long time. Maybe we can get it on workday now in a brand new 
century and a half after that. I mean, for them to give their lives and unfortunately be martyrs is what set us up what we have now, which is an eight-hour workday. Uh, healthcare, in some instances, at companies. The fear of us striking, of using our own power to make them kowtow to us is what makes them afraid and gives us what we want. Um, without, without this, nothing, nothing would ever be happening. I kind of feel that right now, with what we have going on, I was reading earlier today that there's about 40% of, uh, I don't know what to call them kids, that it's 18 to 29 year olds who actually support socialism. I think it's a better way to go than capitalism. That's huge. <laughs> because before this, you had the Red Scare. You had people afraid of socialism and communism. You had people hiding under tables because they thought the Russians were going to nuke us. Um, so for 40% of, of the next generation to be in support of something so radical, as a new form of economy, that says that we're slowly picking away at the capitalist hole of the, of the world. Um, and, and, I, and I think, and, and I think from what I what I read, it's mostly because it's mostly because of Google and because of the fact that the Red Scare is over. So there's nobody telling them, you know, eight hours out of the day. Hey, you know what? If you're doing a real good job. Watch out for the nuclear bomb. Watch out for the commies. Um, I don't know how old. Yeah, same difference. Yeah, we've got our own boogeyman now. That's great. Um, how many of you remember the film uh, Red Dawn? Yeah, that was a good one. That was one about the commies actually trying to invade Denver. And a group of high school kids holding them off. This was made like 85 or 86, I think. So, I mean. I like the Russians are coming to this. It's Russians and Cubans. Yeah. Together. Yeah, together. <laughs> so, I mean, we're at, the, we're at a staging point now with everything that we're dealing with, with the occupation, with Occupy, that if we can set aside our theoretical differences, and that was loud, <laughs> and actually start working together, and, and not just necessarily, you know, anarchist and socialist, but socialist and democrat, you know, socialist and liberal, anarchist and liberal, whatever you want to call them. This is the time that we actually have to actually start working with each other to change what's going on. That's the only way we're going to repeal NDAA or anything else that's coming down the loop that they're going to use to try to silence us. And that's exactly what they're doing is trying to silence us. It'll come to the point at some time where maybe we want to take up weapons. But right now, we can use our voices and at least try to do something before that happens. So, um, with uh, labor unions in the late 1800s, things like um, health care and the hour one day, um, were those also afforded to uh, African Americans at that time as well? No, actually, it was a lot worse for African Americans. Um, the one story I was telling earlier uh, about the sugar fields, the sugar <laughs> fields. Um, let me go back to it, actually. It actually was a little bit before that that I kind of wanted to get into. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before they got what? Before they before they were hanged, he yelled out something really inspiring. I remember. And it's really going to be out. And then you know what? Yeah, it was only with the in my it's the one thing that I did not bring with me to that actually. It was only with the article, but that's one with the point. But it's really awesome. I don't want to like say how this was wondering about now. Mm -hmm. um, was what happened like were, was there still an effort on labor unions after they got health care and these things to help and elevate the uh, African American working class as well, or was there a racial divide there still? It, it depended on the union. 
Um, the Knights of Labor, uh, for the most part, worked hand in hand with the blacks uh, to try to bring them up to a level the same as the whites who they represented. Um, and gender. And gender, but it, the, the, the northern unions, the ones that were actually like prominent, um, didn't. There were two different, there were usually two different union halls. Um, especially in the case of the, the women strikers, um, there was usually a meeting for the men and a meeting for the women, uh, just because they didn't want to have them mixed up. But usually, what they came to was the same thing. Um, so the unions, even then, were still segregated, even after the Civil War, um, because it just it still wasn't seen as being uh, necessary. So in, in that case, and then some folks might argue that um, the unions, the northern unions in particular, that didn't um, recognize the struggles of people of color as being the same as workers' struggles, um, were actually continuing to support like a middle class kind of uh, value. And today, we have our eight-hour workday, we have our health care sometimes, and that's considered like, oh, that's a good job that everyone should have for yeah. the Merck, right? But at the same time, like when we fight for that, does that mean that we're forgetting about the other oppression that's taking place? Um, that you know, for folks who like healthcare and and an eight-hour workday, like that's not even something they can. They just want food. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so no, and, and I think um, part of our struggle with Occupy, or maybe uh, I'm speaking too broadly, maybe as anarchists and socialists, our struggle is to. Uh, bring forth not a, not a minimum wage, but a living wage, um, to make it so that uh, everybody has a roof over their head if they so choose to have one. There are people who don't want to have a roof over their head, who like the idea of just rambling around. Um, but it, it's our goal to actually kids to have an education free of charge from K all the way through uh, college. Whatever. Um, you know, some kids don't want to be in college. Some want to learn a trade. Put them in the trades. Some, you know, I mean, that's just what they do. So would you suggest then that it's important for workers and folks of color to recognize that their issues are connected and that the exploitation and oppression that they both experience is also connected? They, they are wholeheartedly interconnected. Um, without one, you don't get the other. I mean, with, without somebody having your back, be it white, black, brown, uh, Navajo, whatever, without somebody having your back, you have nothing. You can be easily squashed. Everybody, this is, this is a fight for everybody. This is a struggle for the world. Without, without backup, without friendship, without camaraderie, what do you have other than a hollow fight? Uh, uh, I was going to say, um, Tim Wise talks about that, that like the most recent financial crisis, it got so bad because for 10 or 20 years, people were getting screwed over on horrible mortgages and unemployment in black and brown communities and nobody cared what happened to them. So I think recognizing the interconnectedness of everybody's struggle is what keeps, you know, like, like this could have been caught 20 years ago, people gave a shit <coughs> people who weren't in their tiny communities. You see the right wingers and the Sheriff Joe types using racism as a wedge issue and using the sort of xenophobic anti immigrant language as a way of sort of mobilizing lower middle class and middle class white people against, you know, and it's a way of, you know, taking power that could be out of that, the solidarity between those groups. Um, I think. No, it's strategic. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you, you've got people like Sheriff Joe Arpaio, you've got the governor, Jan Brewer, um, who purposely go on TV and, and spread lines. I mean, it's, it's part of their propaganda. I remember for a long time, uh, the big joke on Jan Brewer was the headless torsos in the middle of the desert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where, where were they? Right. Yeah, she made that, she, she pulled that straight out of her ass. Um, but people swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. It's scary. Exactly, uh, because it's scary. McCain said that Mexican illegal immigrants people. cause all the fires back in the spring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, Why not? It, it's, it's these things that, that are said by, uh, unfortunately, uh, the right, because they are so interconnected with 
the corporations. And I'm not saying the left isn't either. The Democrats are just as equally tied in. Democrats aren't left, though. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a president who's willing to take away our rights easily on New Year's. No, he won't take the rights of American citizens. Let's just take away your citizenship yeah. and then take well, your that, That's what they're working on next. Yeah, that's what they're working on next. But, I mean, these are the things that... <laughs> these are the things that we, have to, that we are fighting against now. These are things that we've been fighting against since, since the country was a country. I mean, I, I can't even go back that far because I'm only talking about this, but, I mean, they're... The Constitution wasn't written for necessarily the lower class. It was definitely written by the upper class. And it's been followed that way since. Sure, we've been given things here and there, little handouts. We've gotten our eight hour work day. Everybody has the right to guns for now. Um, not everybody. Not, well, not, well, if you're a criminal, yeah. Well, the yeah, exactly. That's a whole other subject. Um, but the thing is, is like, these are things that we have to fight for. These are things that we have to fight against. This is something that we have to stop. The Constitution is very not favor. It's only us who upholds our rights. I really want to see us as a movement come up with a creative way to deal with the elections. And I feel like it's a little late for this upcoming one, but the next one. Uh, it's, it's never too late. We still we still have a whole year to figure out some way to write in to meet the people. That's it. That's right. it's, it's Ron Paul. Well, we all vote for Ron Paul. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I don't care if he's a fucking rainbow Republican. I ain't doing it. <laughs> 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 Here's something, actually. This is a really good point about Ron Paul uh, that relates to our topic. Okay? So, Ron Paul talks about going back to the Constitution, right? Okay, the Constitution sure. as the way that it is, right? And there are a lot of folks in our society today who are like, oh, that's a great idea, yes, let's do it. Ah, they're really, really excited, right? And, um, but I think it's really important to recognize what that means. Going back to the Constitution, first of all, the Constitution legalized slavery. Slavery was legal under the Constitution, okay? So what does that mean, going back to the Constitution? Yeah. Right? Okay, also, all, yeah, we already are slaves for the, for the most part, exactly, we're wage slaves now. But the other part is that, you know, we talked about wanting more political participation. The original Constitution only allowed us to vote for our Senate members, not our representatives. So they're taking more rights away from us. And again, if the Constitution was written by elites, for elites, then are we just going back to a time of more elite rule? I think it's really important to think about those things because we uphold the Constitution as this like most amazing thing that was ever written and it's the end all be of all of all human politics, oh my god, you know, but it's like, wait a minute, we can't do better than that? Like, really? We can move beyond that. Let's not go back, let's move forward. That's something I see a lot, like when we're at protests and stuff and like the cops moving in and people are all screaming like, oh, their forefathers are rolling over in their graves. Like, yeah, they're rolling over in their graves because we have the right to at least even be from yeah. here, you know, not because of what you're saying. Like, there's a real lack of education within the Well, and I think... Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm not an idea. I'm going to say what you're saying about God because the only people that are, in fact, people are white men of the entire yeah. world land. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not really working for me too well because I'm only 23 right now. And, and if you think about it, it doesn't really work too well for hardly anybody other than the 1% anyway. And, and, and I'm not white enough for them. I'm Jewish, so I'm going to get to vote out. Even some of them don't even own land. This, so, right. I mean, you know, I mean, this is the whole... Thank God there's little red wouldn't be able to vote. Yeah. But I think, too, like, our education system is also run by the elite so to speak, so they push an elite agenda, and they want us to think that the country is the best, most amazing thing that's ever happened, mm -hmm. and like, maybe there are some good things, you know, I'm not going to totally discount, you know, over 200 years of history, obviously, you know, but like, for, for the most part, like, it's been a history of oppression and exploitation, and that's, and I mean, lies. and lies, and like, we can, we can do better, I know we can do yeah. better, the people yeah. in this room, yeah. we can do better, Apathy. the people everywhere in the Occupy movement, we can do better, and we're working on it now, you know, it's fucking exciting. That should be the motto, we can do better. <laughs> <laughs> Another world is possible. But on the subject okay. of propaganda, we were talking about Joe a little while ago and like all the lies of Joe and Jim Brewer. It's the lies are kind of interesting, but what's more interesting about them is people, even when they believe the lies, like, oh, so they're not really cutting off Mexicans' heads or whatever in the desert. Like, I'm still not racist because it's not 
racism, it's, I mean, ethnocentricity, which isn't much better, but I guess it'd be like Americanism or patriotism. There we go. It's not racism, it's patriotism to believe that Mexicans are bad because they're immigrants. And it's just a whole propagandist lie that we've been made to believe. And that's why the lies go over so big. The magic box told me so. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what's dangerous about right-wing politics, though, is they've always catered to that populist idea, and, like, the populace doesn't realize that they're not representing their interests at all. But they speak to them by dumbing down the people that they put out there. They're like, Palin, Bachman, yeah. we're just like you, you know? We don't read books either. <laughs> <laughs> so they are able to get people to vote for them. Here's something else to think about, too, the fact of the matter that right now the Republicans are the right-wingers. But back when May Day was happening, the Republicans were actually the left. So they've, they've interposed themselves. Right now they're the right-wing. They can op they can flip right back over. Which who knows? They, yeah, exactly. And they might be in the process of that right now, with the Democrats being so far to the center, and the right being so far to the right. <laughs> what happened to the church? You know, the yeah, wing party? Mean, yeah, exactly. The, the right's leaning way more towards fascism. And it's really funny because uh, a lot of the... Don't ask me how I know this. Um, but a lot of the Nazis don't even agree with the right wing. You know, it's, now it's, it's just... <laughs> yeah. If I may add, like, how you know that is because you were watching the video of one of us interacting with the Nazi, and he was basically saying, like, wow, everything you're saying is cool, except for the fact that you hate anybody who's brown. Yeah. <laughs> Not that. Um, That's how I, I have, figured it out. I, really I have my, my, my own, own I have my own connections. They shall name a name. And <laughs> hang out with Nazis. Is that what you're telling us? Huh? Oh. No, I'm not so, what, one of them. We watched the other night a Naomi Wolf's <laughs> documentary that did show the ten steps to a closed society and fascism. And it's very on point. Who's that song? Naomi Wolf. She wrote a book, but she does a documentary where she explains the book. So if you don't feel like reading, you can watch her <laughs> talk about it. Brian <laughs> pictures. <laughs> So we're, we're getting very close to that. How about the more contemporary day action? Day action and like how they've been continuing in the anarchist society? Um, I didn't look at that. I just look at history. Um, yeah. Uh, it's. I don't know. What, what would you say? I don't I mean, really. Okay. I. I know about the last uh, four years in Phoenix. Yeah. Basically, a, a 12 years ago, folks, anarchists in Arizona, started organizing for May Day, and there was a really big action 12 years ago. I don't know a lot about it. Um, in 1999, you had the World Trade Organization in Seattle, and they shut that down successfully. Not just anarchists, but was that a May Day action? I don't know if that was May Day. Well, I think there was. I think it was. There was one of them that was. There was a May Day action up there. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly, but that, that's just in general like a more like well-known kind of. Uh, yeah. Um, we were talking outside Pittsburgh in 2008 at the the G20. Yeah, that's the G20. Um, yeah, then Chicago's coming up this May. Is it? Um, I remember a few years back. Uh, the anarchists, we, we actually marched, uh, it was actually anti-war protests if I remember right. Was it for May Day? Or was it anti-war, Mary, do you remember? Or was it Yeah, that was May Day. That was May Day? We got together and we, walked, we marched into Metro Center we actually closed down Metro Center. Oh, that's what that dude was talking about. Yeah. yeah. When was this? Uh, was it 90? No, no, it was probably like So, and that, it was that was fun to see the stores slam their gates. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Brick by brick, wall by wall, capitalism is going to fall. Yeah. I mean, the, these are things that we can do because we can get into the malls. We can walk through. We can close down buildings. We did it on the 14th. We closed down Bank of America that day. That was fun. You know? I mean, these are things that we can do without fear of any real repercussion. 
Yeah, you know, whatever. But they're really but not hanging. Yeah. And they got those pepper bullets. Yeah. Now they were. Yeah, back then, they were actually kind of afraid to whip it out. It was kind of funny. Wow. What? I'm not afraid to whip it out. <laughs> <laughs> I did it my work. I did it my work. I just got out of here. They used to shoot them with the pepper balls in tent city all the time. Right. Just like for sport? No. Well, they, they would have like, <laughs> you know, people would get into fights in their pods or whatever, and they just go into the pod and just like start shooting them, and then they all have like the little sink that they also drink out of. They would try to wash it off with water, and you know, they didn't have access to milk and magnesia and all that fantastic stuff. But I've done so. That's it. Remember at the gathering when the one dude said, like, we won midday? Remember what I'm Yeah. So how. I, do, I remember, you don't know what that means, but how long, has, does everyone look at Mayday as a win or lose thing? Like if you shut down Mayday you won, or if you shut something down you won and if you didn't you lose, or is that just him saying that? I think it depends on who you talk to. Um, I think a lot of it, what he was saying was rides on like the amount of arrests, the okay. amount of police interaction and messing with if you get away with a lot more stuff. Yeah. And was that like, like the term of win and lose, the way yeah. you use them? Is that like national thing or is that just what he used? I think that's just the terminology that he used. Um, I've not ever really referred to it as that. Um, but if that were the case, then I would consider the Metro Center protest a win. Um, because we didn't get pepper sprayed, because the cops who were there weren't able to get their pepper spray out, their little mace canisters. The guy was fumbling with it for about three and a half minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he uses pepper Yeah, he, and was he, uh, was he pepper had trained fully now. trained? Yeah. They had some practice. <laughs> They're like, whoosh. I mean, but he was a mental figure. Um, I, mean, I mean, he was a legitimate phoenix. He wasn't rent a pig or anything. Excuse my language. But he was a legitimate phoenix. Rent a pig. You don't need to excuse yourself. That might have been live stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, more. But, <laughs> at least, like, such as beauty, winner loses in the eye of the whole. So, I mean. Yeah, it's still a great uh, yeah. idea. I think it's more about choosing, like, you know, yeah, what are the goals that are strategically useful that day, and that's kind of funny. Yeah, right. Totally. Like, I think a lot of our goals for Occupy mm -hmm. are a lot of the same goals that anarchists and socialists have had for a long time, and we've been waiting for that win. Yeah. For a very long time. I think some folks in Occupy uh, still are playing catch up. But well, still, well, it's a long society. history of shitty education. Kate Quartz, Rob Roder, Occupy, and PSL. And it's been a long time oh, yeah. since this stuff was day to day news. Mm -hmm. Like, people have been quiet for a yeah. while yeah. now. People have been lulled <coughs> into, this, like, you know, yeah, yeah. Have to right? Ourselves. And they've been slowly, you know, ramping up the, turning up the heat, like, Tron's boiling. And I keep using that metaphor because I think it's really apt. And, like, it's not just about lobsters. It's a Mark Twain quote. Because I'm lobsterist, oh. I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Maine. <laughs> 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 frogs eventually jump out of water. I know, it's a myth anyway. Yeah. But yeah. 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 the metaphor frogs. Yeah. 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 The metaphorical frog yeah. cooks. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Frog, <laughs> frogs will eventually jump out of water, whereas lobsters will sit and scream. No, with lobsters. So. <laughs> with lobsters, the female lobsters will help each other get out, and the male lobsters will hold the other ones down. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I want to say something that might be a bit nuts. I hope nobody goes too crazy. Really, but, Jeff? Really, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> That'd the be 18, a first. In the, 18, in the 1880s, you know, they had all these oppressive laws, and the people were fucking crazy, got violent, started shooting at the people who were uh, enforcing these oppressive laws. Now we have a horrendously oppressive law, and we're pushing that whole everybody just be quiet about it and be completely peaceful and sit down. And eventually they're going to bring those M16s out and they're going to corral us all up and we're going to be peaceful saying, oh fuck, I'm done. The, the difference yeah, is between right. the 1880s and now. Yeah. The difference. Social media. It, one, social media. <laughs> Two, those, those acts of aggression on the striker's part only came after the acts of aggression by the strike breakers or the Pinkerton detectives or whoever it was. Well, so it was, still, high it was still peaceful up until the act of aggression. Mm -hmm. Once the act of aggression happened, then all hell broke loose. Um, would I agree at this point in time for an act of aggression after an act of aggression? I don't know. 
It depends. <laughs> it depends on what that act of aggression is. What happened in Oakland, I agree with what happened afterwards. The taking of the ports, etc.